Hello friends of Faith Before Fitness and thank you for joining me on this 86th day of our 100 day corrective exercise and scripture reading challenge. I am going to read us a psalm that deals with pain because our workout today is going to be to correct any ab pain that you might be getting or any low back pain that you might be getting from your current ab program. So this is Psalm 57. Let your glory be over all the earth. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me. For in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge till the storms of destruction pass by. I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me. He will put to shame him who tramples on me. God will send out of his steadfast love and his faithfulness. My soul is in the midst of lions. I lie down amid fiery beasts, the children of man whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongues are sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. They set a net for my steps. My soul was bowed down. They dug a pit in my way, but they have fallen into it themselves. My heart is steadfast, O God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody. Awake, my glory, awake, O harp and lyre. I will awake the dawn. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the people. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is great. To the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Now, I have noticed through the years of reading Psalms that there's a pattern. And most of the Psalms, not all of them, are written by King David. And he usually starts out his Psalms with some sort of rant. He's in a mess that he either got himself in this mess because of the choices he made, or he's in a mess because his enemies are always coming at him because he is a man of battle. But I think of different things. I might not be in battle all day long. I might not have made the same choices that David did, but there are certain things that come upon us, whether it's our own thoughts, whether it's our own anxieties that we create inside and we just don't know how to get rid of them. There's just so many times we might be in despair, whether it's through illnesses or sicknesses. Most of my clients that I work with are special needs clients, so they're working through so many of their own issues and they still remain strong through it all. And so this is the pattern that I see that King David does, is he lets out all his ranting and then he looks to heaven and he looks to God and he says, but I will be thankful and I will praise you. And through that thankfulness and through that worship and through that praise, I think is where he finds his strength to get through his hardest times. And if you will steadily read the Psalms, you'll see this pattern and you might find this to be a gem in your life. It might be like the secret to what makes some people have joy throughout all their trials and what makes people turn and become bitter through all their trials. But King David was known as the man after God's own heart. And I believe that this is because no matter what happened in his life, he always turned heavenward and he looked up and he always praised God no matter what was happening. And it always brought him out of his pit of despair. So if you read the Psalms of David, you'll see he is a man that has a lot of depression and he struggles and he wrestles and always comes back to Thanksgiving. So I hope that that will encourage you today if you are wrestling with anything that you're wrestling through today. And now we're going to talk about low back pain caused by certain abdominal exercises you might be doing. So. I have seen that people complain about exercises like these. They say when they do this kind of exercise, maybe their hips will click and this hurts their low back. So I have seen people recommend that maybe you should hold on to something behind you like this and that will give you support. So that way like I would hold on to there. So you can do that. And another one that will cause pain is a sit-up. And I just think that that's because a sit-up is not the greatest exercise 
and you don't really need to be doing it. I don't know. It's controversial. I don't really like to do controversial exercises because if the exercise is controversial, there's so many others to do. So sit-ups, crunches of any kind might cause you low back pain. The leg lifts, these, this kind of thing might cause you low back pain here. And the reason why it's causing you low back pain, and I don't think that it's really going to help to hold on to anything back here for support, because the reason these types of exercises are causing you low back pain is because you don't have your transverse abdominis developed enough to support your back in this way. So if you are not using your transverse abdominis, this belt that goes around your entire body and using that to connect you to the floor so that you are not straining your low back, then you're not going to be able to do this kind of movement without straining your low back. So first you need to go back to the beginning and strengthen that transverse abdominus. So first you need to figure out what your transverse abdominus is. So your transverse abdominus is this muscle group in here. And one of the first things you could do for that is to figure out how to do a vacuum. So I always have somewhat of a belly. I don't like to show my belly too much on screen, not because it's a belly, but because I like to be modest. But for the vacuum, it's um, you'll be able to see better what's happening. You might want to stand up for this one. So with the vacuum, you're going to kind of like exhale, let all your air out. And then, I mean, you're going to get an air, like a, a breath. And then you're going to go and blow everything out as much as you possibly can until you're getting your stomach almost, you're trying to get your belly button to go out through your spine. It's kind of what it feels like when you start to do it. So it should hurt, it should cramp up. And then I think about almost like lifting up and bringing this in. And then as you do that, you should be able to hold it for a little bit. So I'll get closer. So with this vacuum, we're going to take it, blow it, blow it, blow it. <laughs> till you're getting all the way. And you should start to feel it cramp all through here. And when you start to feel this cramping, that is your transverse abdominus doing its work. So then you're gonna let it out. I've heard that it's easier for people if they lean on something. I am not known if I found that to be true or not, but let's give it a try. So we're gonna lean on something, we're gonna let that belly out, then vacuum it in. Now let's see, oh, we got this. Oh, it kind of brings back memories of childbirth. Oh boy. <laughs> right? So let's do this a few more times. And this is something you could do every single day if you want to torture yourself. As much as you want to torture yourself, you could do this move. All right, so here's the belly. And blow it out. Try to push your belly button. So hopefully that's given you an idea of what your transverse abdominus is. So that is what needs to be strengthened in order to do these movements without having low back pain. So another one that is going to help with that is to have your back down. Now think about that vacuum and vacuum your back to the floor so that you're already feeling that. So that's like a pelvic tilt. So that's how you would do a pelvic tilt is by thinking about that vacuum. So working on that pelvic tilt, and that's where you should be when you're doing these abdominal exercises. 
Now the first one, before you start with this kind of thing, you should master the marching. So you want to be able to march. So that's pretty basic, but it's a lot more difficult if, okay, so if I'm not doing anything, see, I've got this big gap here and then I'm doing this. I'm not really working my core at all. I'm working my hip flexors. But if I vacuum and get that, my back down now, when I'm marching, I'm being very intentional with this march and I could really feel that moving the whole time. All right, so now your next step is to do the same movements, but you're gonna bring yourself up into a bridge. Okay, so in the bridge, now you're gonna start activating your glutes and your transverse abdominus will activate as well. So now you can march like this. Now again, don't be slack, because as soon as you stop engaging everything, you're just gonna be using your hip flexors and that arch is gonna be too much, so you wanna really squeeze and be intentional in every movement that you're doing. So press through your heels as you make your switches for your march. Okay. Now that is going to strengthen all through there. Our next one is going to be, you can keep one leg bent and again, I have a um, low back arch and I always have to be aware of that. So again, if I'm just gonna do something without thinking about it, I'm not going to be working my abs. Really what I'm gonna be working is my hip flexor. So I could do this all day long and say that I did a thousand leg lifts, but I didn't do anything but overwork my hip flexor. So what I have to do, I have to vacuum and bring, put that belt on, put that transverse abdominus on. And now when I do this leg lift, you can even see how much harder I'm working and that that is actually working my entire transverse abdominus, my glutes, my quads. But before I did the vacuum, I really wasn't feeling much except overwork of the hip flexor. So before you go into double leg raises, then master the single leg raise. And this is also a good exercise to build those muscles on the sides of your knee to support when you have meniscus problems too. So this isn't just a core workout. Now see, I was talking and I got a little bit distracted and my arch came back and now I'm not engaging, I'm not feeling that transverse abdominus. So again, vacuum, push it down and... So it's almost like breathing while holding your breath. Because you don't want to stop breathing, but you want to hold this together and keep on breathing. Okay, and I wouldn't say just because you did those little bits of exercises there that you're ready to do a double raise, but if you think about it, maybe you haven't been vacuuming your back. Now, if I'm going to not vacuum and I have this arch, I already am like, oh man, that does not feel good on my back. But if I, before I start doing that, if I go get that vacuum and now it's a lot more difficult of a movement, but it's not hurting my low back. It's all happening here where it's supposed to happen. So make sure you have your vacuum going on to activate your transverse abdominus. All right, that was so much better because when I showed you it with my arch, it really hurt my back just doing those few that I did. So then a lot of people want to do this and they think that that is going to help and that doesn't because that just cheats 
your, it just props you up a little bit, but it doesn't cause you to engage your transverse abdominis. So again, this one is the one that bothers me because sometimes you do this in a hit class for like 30 seconds. I'm like, come on already, my back is killing me. Because I think that by the time you're going for 30 seconds, you're not thinking of keeping that vacuum the whole time. So vacuum and then do this. And now it, you feel it so much more, but it protects your low back. Now my low back doesn't hurt, but the, the movement is more difficult and you feel everything tightening, but I don't feel low back pain now. So this is so much better. So just think about now if I were to relax and do it, then I've got this arch and now my back is hurting. All right, so always, always work with that vacuum. Okay, so you might not be ready to get to this point yet because you might not have the strength to keep your transverse abdominis engaged. So that's why I'm saying start with the marching. Always make sure your um, back is down. All right, so this one and then up in a bridge marching. Any kind of bridge, any kind of bridge that you want to do is going to strengthen those muscles and give you stability. And a one-legged bridge like this, but just make sure you're pushing your transverse abdominis, push it into the floor and then come up every time, no matter what you're doing there. So that'll help strengthen. All right, and then the other one, this is one of those moves. When in doubt, do this one. <laughs> This one works pretty much every single muscle of the core. There's about nine of them. And when you look at the best exercise for each one of those muscle groups, opposite leg, opposite arm and leg always comes up. So this one should not cause you any low back pain. It should just help to strengthen those weak, those weaker muscles that we don't activate as much. So this one's going to help to strengthen your transverse abdominis, your erector spinae, your multifidus, your quadratus lumborum. It's even going to do your obliques because anytime you work one side at a time, it's going to work your obliques. And if you want to, you can even add an opposite arm, opposite leg crunch. Not everybody is supposed to crunch. So if you have osteoporosis or anything that affects your spine, talk to your doctor about crunching, but I still think this is a much safer way to crunch than crunching on the floor. So you can do that. That will help strengthen the muscles needed. I mean, there's so many exercises to do. Like there's never enough time to do as many exercises as there are in the world. So why focus on the ones that cause pain? We don't want to cause pain by exercising. We want to keep our body moving for as long as possible with the least amount of pain for as long as possible. So if something causes you pain, don't do it. There's always something better. All right, so now, Everybody is so afraid of bear crawl and they think this is such a risky, terrible move. No, bear crawl, everybody should be able to bear crawl. So just starting off in your bear crawl, and I do this even with people up into their 80s. So all you need to do is bring your knees right off the floor and that's the beginnings of a bear crawl. And then you can hold that, keep your transverse abdominis tucked in and then you can bring it back down. So just doing this is nice good practice and that will help strengthen that transverse abdominis. Now if you want to start advancing from that once you're in this bear you can work on bringing the hand forward and back, the other hand forward and back. You can work on bringing a foot back 
and the foot back. So once you feel like you've mastered that, then you can start more movement in your bear crawl as well from down here. So up. So then you can start moving a hand out and a foot in and back until you get more comfortable with that. So once you practice that some and you feel like you're getting stronger and stronger, then you can actually start to bear crawl. But you wanna make sure that you're not coming up like this. <laughs> so you don't wanna do that. You wanna keep your knees as close to the ground as possible. Just like this, it's very small movement. So like this. All right, and back. You could do bear crawl in all different directions. All right, I'm going to side to side. As long as you are staying low. All right. Now, I don't prefer a plank just for the purpose of plank. I'm never going to sit there and hold a plank for 30 seconds to three minutes. Like, why? Why would I do that? So, once you've mastered plank, so with your plank, you want to make sure you're on one straight line. You're squeezing your glutes. You are having your elbows underneath your shoulders. You're not bowing down. You're not popping up. You're one straight line. Once you can do that, let's do some glute plank marching. Now, this one is really good for all the muscles around the core. And if that is causing you low back pain, it's because you're performing it incorrectly. Most of the time what I see with this is this, which means you're not engaging your, so here's me doing a plank without engaging my vacuum. Okay, so now a vacuum. Now see that vacuum. You blow it all out, squeeze your glutes, and now you are doing a proper plank. All right? So there's that. Now there's some good standing exercises that will help strengthen things. If you have an anchor and a band. So if you have an anchor and a band, you're going to step out sideways from your anchor. You're going to pull a band as far as you can. It's going to try to pull you to the side, but don't let it pull you to the side. And then you're going to take the band straight out and in. Okay. So this one is going to work all those muscles around your core. It looks like you're not doing anything until you try it. <laughs> then you really can see that something's happening here. So we're going to do one side and we'll take it to the other side. All right. So you're starting it like in between like your or your like sternum and then pushing it straight out and bringing it back in and out. All right. And then another one that's fun is a step out. So you're going to step out and step in, step out and step in keeping that band right in between your ribs. So you're holding it like right here with both hands. All right. All right, we'll do that other side. Go 
going lumpy there. I was not straight. <laughs> And 10. All right, and I can't believe I almost forgot to show you my favorite of all moves. The best of the best. This is, if you look up best abdominal exercises, this comes up best for beginners, best for advanced. It's just the best of the best. All right, so starting off beginner, you'll be right like this with your hands and your knees up. You're gonna tuck your, your uh, put on your belt, your transverse abdominus, blow it out into the floor, and then you're gonna do one arm back, one foot down, and then come up, and you're going to do opposites, like this. All right, and once you have advanced from that, then you can start sliding your leg all the way out. But make sure you're squeezing, make this movement happen, from squeezing your glute, not just by kicking your leg out. So it's opposite arm, opposite leg. The leg that's down, then the other arm is down. And then bring everything up and then back. Bring everything up and back. All right. Inhale and exhale. Now to advance from there, you're gonna bring your hands and your feet up like a dead bug on the floor, the best kind, huh? <laughs> so now we're gonna take it back and up, back and up. So I like this movement for my older adults because it's very cognitive. It takes a lot of coordination. You have to think about it to make sure your hands and Feet are going in opposite ways. You want to think about squeezing that glute every time and squeezing here and keeping your belt on. So there's a lot going on on this move and it's working so many muscles. I have seen this move for beginners and I've seen complete awesome bodybuilders online showing this one. So this one is the golden move for everybody. So as many as you can do, and then you also can do it with a stability ball. I don't know if this makes it, sometimes it makes it a little bit easier to know which um, hand is up and which leg is down, but it does take more balance. So you can do this one. I just always think everything's more fun with the stability ball. <laughs> so, and then you can focus on squeezing your hands and your feet together, just doing that. Just here, squeezing your hands and your feet together, you can feel that. And then let go, bring it up, let go, and bring it up. All right, so then just do as many dead bugs as you can. And hopefully, you will start getting that transverse abdominus stronger and you will have less, hopefully no, low back pain when you start doing your abdominal exercises again. So remember, there's never any reason for pain. Try to be as pain-free in your workouts as possible. Now, you want to get the burn, you want to feel that you're improving, but pain is not always a good thing, especially no low back pain. If you're having low back pain, that's never good. So if you're having low back pain with any exercise you're doing, you need to figure out what you're doing wrong and make sure that's not happening anymore. All right, so I will see you tomorrow for another workout and another scripture. See you then. Bye-bye.